Welcome, enter my world. Don't tell anybody, this is my secret laboratory where I do all my development work, electronics, software, YouTube videos, all done here. And I'm going to give you a small peek into what, how I do everything in my home studio. There may be some equations floating around. Catch them if you can. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Achuda and this is where I cultivated little ideas to become big projects. From here, I travel the world. From here, I've been to other universes. From here, I've seen the glory of the Lord God's creation in all its wonder by not taking a step from this place from this table. Let me show you some of them by showing you something basic and simple first. Many years ago, I owned a 20-year-old Nissan Sentra and its air conditioner kept shorting and would not turn on. After many failed attempts by car mechanics to repair it, I decided to have a go at it. I stripped out all the wiring and the circuitry and replaced them with my own circuit. My own circuit worked very well. It was fantastic because I was saving 10% on fuel consumption with my own circuit. No doubt this was an old car so the savings may be due to the older design of the air conditioner or the engine and all of the works. But I learned a lot by accident because I wanted to solve a problem and gain additional knowledge about the workings of automobiles. The next subject I would like to talk about is what I discovered about Huawei batteries. These batteries are used to power the portable modems, Huawei portable modems. The Huawei batteries were swelling so I tried to find out the cause. After many experiments I discovered that one of the reasons that Huawei batteries swell is that they were being charged by the USB 5V supply. If charged for a year with a 5 volt supply, they will swell. When I trickle charge them with a 3.8 volt supply of my Nikon battery charger, they did not swell after 10 months of charging. So that is most likely an indication that don't charge your Huawei batteries with a 5 volt supply. Finally, after examining the problems I had with the battery charging, I have drawn a circuit that would protect the battery from overcharging and automatically disconnect the battery when a supply voltage is applied to the modem. You can copy this circuit and implement it in whatever device you have. The third topic I'd like to discuss is about cooling PCs and laptops. I have been very interested in this topic ever since I started creating YouTube videos one and a half years ago. It's a fantastic topic to talk about and investigate. Basically, you can achieve speeding up of CPUs by overclocking or by cooling your CPU. What I found out was that what normally people say is that overclocking will increase your CPU speed by 10 to 15 percent. Some are lucky they can get better than that. But what I found out was that cooling my CPU, which is locked for overclocking, cannot overclock. I managed to get something like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent improvement in CPU performance. It really can speed up depending on the conditions or the environment you're running it on. So let's have a look. I will show you some of the experiments I've done and there are some more experiments that I have to do which will take another few more months or maybe a, a few more years. I don't know. I'm going to do them. I'm going to try and we will see. As you can see from the above drawing, the chip packaging is normally made of plastic or epoxy or ceramic or some other insulating material. That means cooling through the packaging will be inefficient and probably slow. If you examine the metallic part of the chip construction, it consists of the leads and the lead frame and wire bonding attached to the tracks on the silicon die. Those parts would form good heat conductors. So, a good alternative is to try to cool the die through the leads. 
In this example, we can observe that a fan blowing onto the top of the package will not be that effective as it will be cooling the package directly and in so doing indirectly cooling the die. Where else, if we blow the fan at the leads of the chip, we will be directly cooling the die inside quickly while it was in its casing and after servicing and changing the thermal paste, my old Samsung laptop was ranked by Cinebench R20 at 460. This ranking was carried out at room temperature of 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Upon dismantling the casing to expose the solder side of the motherboard and to blow a jet of air at the CPU pins to cool the CPU, the Cinebench R20 ranking improved to 752. That is a 63% improvement in performance of the CPU without overclocking. That was a phenomenal performance improvement of my old laptop, wasn't it? I still have some more experiments to be carried out. Mostly they will be on clockable CPUs and it will take me a few months to source the CPUs and the motherboards and to try cooling it from the solder side of the motherboard and then we will have more definitive results. It'll probably be a desktop version. One wonders what we can do, isn't it? If we put our minds to it. You know, I see the world in mathematical relationships everywhere. The beauty of mathematics is that it's like an angelic language that can be used to predict the outcome of systems and events. Let me show you some of the predictions that I've carried out over the years. I got my doctorate in economics even though I am an electronic engineer because I developed mathematical theories of economics that explain many phenomena. My first public predictions were in August 1998 during the Asian financial crisis. I was publishing my theories at geocities.com as no university in Malaysia wanted me. Back in 2012, I predicted that Brent crude prices would fall by June or July 2014. And sure enough, it came true. Brent crude prices began to collapse in June 2014. And it went further than I expected. It went as low as US $20 per barrel. Back in January 2018, I predicted the S&P 500 trend until 2022. The warning that I gave was that be careful in November 2021 as there may be a possibility of the market breaking the inflationary support level. That means if the markets were to fail, it would occur around November 2021. If it does not fail, the bull run beginning in 2009 would continue at least until 2022. There is a limit as to how far into the future I can predict trends as they become more inaccurate the further out they are. It's a different world, isn't it? Running thought experiments and coming out with solutions that lead to new knowledge. The wonders of our mind put to good use is amazing, isn't it? Come, enter my world and see the future.